time, your gateway to the world. A-F-R. American Freedom Radio. Give it to them. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Happy Monday or Moon Day. It is October 28, 2013. Hope you all had a beautiful day and a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And I hate to start your week off like this, but you're stuck with me. I am the special guest here tonight. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so here we go. Bear with me. Uh, you know, I um, I obviously don't use scripts or I would be uh, much more polished <laughs> than I am. But hey, you know, the topic is breaking free of the mind prison. And uh, what does that entail? Well, uh, fear. Fear of public speaking, yes, even me, I have that. Uh, the cycle of shame, role of emotion, self-abuse, punishment, and judgment. The beauty myth and body shame, addictions, mind prisons, and self-healing. Love, hate, and the service, disservice. Plain, nice, and the comfort zone. So all sorts of fun stuff we're going to talk about tonight. So if you would like to uh, join in on the conversation of any questions, Questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight. Us, well, I guess that's me, myself, and I. The number is 218-339-8525. That's 218-339-8525. And if you'd like to join us on the text chat, that's over at souljourneysradio.com. Just click on Listen and Chat up in the top center. And there you can join our happy little family. I regret uh, to say I probably won't be uh, communicating with you all as often as I do in the text chat tonight, but I will do my best to kind of watch your comments and questions and such. So if you want to make it easy, er for me. If you do have any questions in the text chat, then post everything in all caps so it'll, you know, hopefully kind of stand out and I can get to that. Um, and I would like to, of course, uh, bring your attention to the fact that um, we are listener supported. Uh, all of the shows, and in fact, the network, uh, American Freedom Radio. So uh, we do rely on your donations to continue this. Uh, there is a PayPal button on uh, my site at Soul Journeys Radio. Dot com. If you've gotten anything out of the show and want to see us continue, then we would really appreciate your support. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Where do I begin <laughs> with all of these questions here tonight I wanted to tackle? Um, of course, uh, many of you know I uh, put up a video last night, which I guess we can re ever I can forever refer to as my crybaby video. <laughs> so for those who haven't seen it, I'll post it in the text chat. Um, of course, it's a long one, so uh, no hurry. I know I uh, sometimes bore you all, but hey, it's uh, the only way. And you know what? It's part of what we're talking about tonight. Coming out of that fear prison, um, you know, all of these things that hold us back. And, you know, I know that, um, you know, when people talk about fear, they think that, oh, well, the only fear is the fear of death. And that's the only thing that controls us. And obviously that's not true. Um, public speaking isn't going to kill me, right? Uh, wearing a bathing suit isn't going to kill me. Um, going out of the house without, you know, makeup or hairbrush and wearing a robe isn't going to kill me. So there's obviously a little bit more going on here uh, that we'd like to address. And somebody before the show in the group asked, uh, you know, I posted a comment in the Facebook group. Uh, anyone feel free to join us. That's on Facebook and just type in Soul Journeys Radio. 
radio, but he says, well, what's the question we have to ask ourselves? So I'm going to ask all of you, and this is not to answer out loud unless, of course, you feel comfortable with that. I mean, if you really do, call into the show and share it because we're all kind of making our way. You know, how do you get over those fears is by actually doing it. I'm kind of gentle, usually, so uh, (laughs) you're safe here, but, you know, my response was, uh, let's start with this. What are your greatest fears? And you know what, if you want to write these down, I think that might be a nice exercise for everyone tonight, you know, get a pen and paper and, you know, just do a little exercise with yourself. What are your greatest fears? What or who would you be? without those fears. You may even want to revisit how have they held you back previously? And what would you what would you like your life to be like? Do you know that you're actually painting it whether you are consciously aware of it or not? What is keeping you from loving yourself fully? And how would you be different if you did love yourself fully? I um, actually posted a question on Facebook uh, recently. How would your life be different if you knew that you were already perfect exactly as you are? And, of course, all of the comments were, um, oh, well, I would be happier, or I would love myself more, or I would be having more fun. So I'd like to ask you, what are we waiting for? What are we are? already perfect exactly as we are we are all pieces of that big you know call it a god puzzle how about that or the divine puzzle of life we are all here for a reason our unique talents our unique everything we all have something unique individual and special to bring to the board or we wouldn't be here at all. And, you know, I've had a few conversations in the past couple weeks about uh, people, you know, wanting to beat themselves up for, you know, uh, uh, for example, uh, one gentleman was sharing that he was on meth for, like, uh, I think 13 or 14 years or something, and literally, like, beating himself up. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I, you know, all these things I did while I was doing that. And so I finally had to ask him. I'm like, yo, dude, (laughs) let's say I was that person confessing this to you. Would you hate me? Would you judge me? Would you shame me? He's like, hell no. Okay. So, you know, I've talked about this before. We always hear love your neighbor as yourself. But what if you were able to love yourself? As your neighbor, what if you were able to love yourself the way you love your kitty or your puppy dog or your garden or your boyfriend or girlfriend or your wife or your husband or your parents or your children or your coworkers or your neighbors? What would life be like? Yeah, pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to give a little example, something that came up last night on um, – You know, the whole shame issue, the cycle of shame. We may think that we are hurting ourselves with that, and obviously we are. We're holding ourselves back from discovering who we really are, chipping away at those, you know, little layers in that mind prison. But this actually really, really surprised me. I had no idea the effect that I was that I was impacting other people with due to my own fear and shame issues. So I'll share with you uh, one example that uh, literally, like one of my very best friends for like four or five years who has been holding on to this for like three and a half years and literally just barely told me last night. This was when I was getting over my fear of um, water. (laughs) and we went to the pool together and I decided to get in and my hair was all wet and I was wearing a bikini (laughs) for like the first time in public trying to get over that you know issue as well but obviously wasn't there then I'm better today than yesterday but still not there yet but anyways um he tried to give me a compliment he told me oh your hair looks so pretty or something like that 
And I'm like, uh, whatever, okay. And I, like, moved on and changed the subject to something else. He didn't realize that I was in a, you know, that cycle of shame, that fear prison that we were talking about. So, in, you know, he never said anything to me. He just, he ended up, I hurt his feelings this entire three and a half years that he held on to because the way I reacted to his positive comment, you know, trying to um, uh, compliment me, you know, he took it like a slap in the face, which, you know, that really hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, oh my gosh, these shames, these fears, everything that we're holding on to actually does hurt other people. I don't know. Have you ever done that yourself? You know, somebody gives you a compliment and you're like, yeah, whatever. Don't lie to me, dude. Or, <laughs> and you know, he didn't do it in a perverted way or, you know, hey baby, uh, cat call type thing at all. He's very, very respectful and just a wonderful person overall. But I don't know. That just really hit me hard that I was affecting other people with my shames, my fear prison. And then, of course, you know, turn that situation around. And here he is holding on to something for three and a half years. Why? Well, he might have had a little fear prison of his own. He was afraid to bring it up to me, one of his best friends, thinking that, he, <laughs> that he's going to piss me off or something like that. Or maybe it's just that fear of speaking, speaking your truth and getting that stuff out in the open. And, you know, we've done these shows uh, with Tobias. Um, the ego games and we did another one I, I, well, I'm going to have to try to remember the title but it was a good one something about uh, 30 seconds of emotion versus 30 years of pain and the example he brought up was uh, the Jackson 5 who uh, some of them did not speak to each other or work together for like 30 years all because somebody thought that somebody thought something else about them. And they never actually discussed these things. Nobody ever actually said, hey, did you really mean this? Or that kind of hurt my feelings or whatever, and kind of put it out on the table for everyone to actually discuss and talk about. And, you know, maybe these examples sound kind of infantile or <clears throat> juvenile or not that serious, but that just goes to show how deep these prisons are, how deep we've actually dug ourselves into this illusion of reality where, you know, many of us are, you know, base our entire lives on what it looks like or, you know, well, I don't look perfect, so I can't do this or my website doesn't look perfect, so I can't do that. For example, I'll share with you, you know, my website, mytrueessence.net. I've been doing those things for five years, and it literally took me till uh, the end of December, the beginning of January, to actually have the confidence to put my website out there, and, you know, thankfully, I learned how to use Weebly so that I could actually do a website by myself, but all those years, I didn't want to put my products out there that, you know, were healing people of gangrene and <laughs> helping people with alcohol addictions and, you know, various things on their site you can go, or, or in their lives. You can go read the testimonials if you like on mytrueessence.net. But my fear prison kept me from actually doing what I love to do. <laughs> How crazy is that? So I don't know about the rest of you, but it is time to take off the masks. And I guarantee if uh, you're, if you aren't ready to take them off, you are not going to like this show. You're not going to like anything that I have to share with you tonight because it's one of those things that scare us all. In fact, I have another friend and actually some other people. This question has come up quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Well, Christy, how do we do it? Uh, you just do it. You
No, how do you eat an elephant? Uh, one bite at a time? No, that's not good enough. I need a list. Give me bullet points. Write it down step by step. Step one, step two, step three, step four. <laughs> and it doesn't work like that because whatever you need to experience in life is going to present itself for you at the time you need it anyways. I mean, there I've taken kind of a conscious path of, you know, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most screwed up of them all, and what can I do to fix it? But I understand that everybody's not ready for that because it is the hardest thing in the world. It really is, let me tell you. I mean, doing things like that have literally kept me in bed for up to three weeks at a time not wanting to be here, I'm just feeling overwhelming shame and grief and regrets and sadness and anger and, you know, all of these things. However, each time I practice this, it gets so much easier. You know, now I'm limited to like a day or two. It's like, okay, well, that was fun. Another ego death. <laughs> and I know, you know, I kind of want to, want to address the ego death and how that's beneath us and we need to rid ourselves of, a, of it. And which, in my opinion, actually only produces more guilt, shame, fear, anger, like, well, why am I not good enough to remove this? Well, it's basically the same as, like, ripping out your heart. Can you rip out your own heart or cut off your own arm or, you know, pull out your own lungs? No. Why? Because it is part of the self. It is part of the whole full-spectrum being okay so i know we want all these little shortcuts so we we feel like we can pray it away or meditate it away or pay uh, you know ungodly amounts to go to spiritual retreats and you know erase it and then we're going to be so much better you know than everyone else it's time to get real and heal MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coaching. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real in the heel. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right. Welcome back. And thanks for joining us here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreeRadio.com. And wow, does that song ring true? At least for me, take these broken wings and learn to fly. You know, this is the thing. We, we're all ashamed of our broken wings. But do you know anyone who doesn't have one? Or... Maybe they're not even broken at all. And the accumulation of all of our experiences actually created even bigger wings than we could actually imagine. You know, let me uh, get back to the uh, positive and negative, so-called positive and negative aspect of our ego. Obviously, there are different ways to deal with it, um, but suppressing it or getting rid of it or praying it away is not the answer. It's there for a reason, just like your tonsils, just like your wisdom teeth, just like your ovaries or your Achilles tendon, right? They're all there for a reason. The I think the trick is to learn to actually use it so that it does come out uh, positive. Uh oh, I'm hearing I'm sounding robotic. All right. <laughs> um, I don't really know what to do about that, but uh, hopefully that will kind of go away. 
Um, but, uh, okay, so uh, in regards to the ego, you know, I want to uh, share uh, this old uh, Cherokee legend that I think uh, sums it up pretty nicely. It says, uh, uh, Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life, and he says, a fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight, and it's between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and every other person, too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Hmm. So what are we going to feed? Are we going to hold on to that baggage, the not good enough programming, the, the fear programming, the shame programming, the, you know, so somebody abused you once. I mean, not to minimize it or trivialize it, but do you know anybody on the planet who has not been abused at some point? abused, raped, beaten, um, uh, you know, talked negatively to, etc. I don't know a single soul at all. So, again, it's a choice, to, you know, because some people climb up the ladder and others don't. They hold on to that baggage and let it weigh them down the rest of their lives. And you know what? I was one of those people for, say, oh, well... All my life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, again, I'm better today than I was yesterday, much better than I was three years ago, even better than I was six years ago. But I'm not all the way there. I mean, let's get real. You know, part of uh, those ego traps, in fact, um, I mean, I, we talked about this on the show before. There was a little blog posted. I can't remember who, but it was titled the, most, or the six most common ego traps on the spiritual path. And uh, the different masks we wear, uh, the Buddha mask, you know, that basically, oh, well, I'm so far removed from worldly emotions. You know, you're just, you can't touch me. I'm beyond it all. Which, you know, basically is only a mask to hide the sensitivity, fear, and confusion. Uh, then you have the uh, positivity mask, the ones that uh, practice the affirmations, mantras, and even when life is, you know, hell, which, by the way, it happens, um, and it's okay because, again, it makes you who you are, um, but, you know, just, oh, everything is so great and whatever, and, and they're basically just holding in, suppressing their actual feelings, whether they are tears of pain or sadness or, uh, you know, any of these emotions that normal healthy humans feel. Then uh, they talk about the uh, superior seeker mask, you know, the ones that, oh, well, I'm so much better than you, and I have the answer for everything, and, <laughs> you know, and then, believe it or not, not every question does have an answer, but what I have found, you know, the answer pretty much to everything is love anyways. You know, I know I ask a lot of questions all the time, um, but really these are just thoughts to ponder. It's that know-it-all mask that, oh, well, I have the answer to everything because I memorized that some scientist in this journal, you know, said this and that and the other. Uh, okay, well, you're stuck in your ego, buddy. Um, <laughs> The next one uh, they talk about in that article is the Messiah Mask. I'm here to change the world, and it's, you know, just me, God, or the angels, or the Pleiades, or whoever gave me this, uh, you know, path where I'm the one. <laughs> yeah, you don't think that has anything to do with ego? Hmm, the negative aspect? Hmm, okay. 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, they talk about the Pundit mask um, uh, that references obscure texts and uses big Sanskrit words, you know, like uh, Tobias mentioned uh, on the show last night, you know, the funny hat cult or being able to repeat something uh, just because somebody else said it and holding on to that as the ultimate truth and then the lost in space mask where uh, you uh, you know find a way to uh, bring Pleiadians archangels entities into every normal question you know how's the weather today well uh, the Pleiadians tell me that it's going to be like this because of whatever XYZ insert your story here and truthfully these are all masks that we put on ourselves to cover up what we don't want to feel. And you know what? I, uh, this was really cool. I had this idea. It just came to me last week, and I jotted down some notes about a video that I wanted to do about, uh, let me see where I jotted it down. Here we go. Ah, the best food. As you know, everybody is uh, talking about, oh, you have to eat uh, this type of food, and then you're going to be perfect, and you're going to be healthy, and this is all it takes. And, you know, really, the best food is the manna, the life force. You know, it's, and when you have that, I'm not promoting GMOs or processed foods or anything at all. Please don't misunderstand me. But when you are living off life force, these are not going to affect you. But what does this life force consist of? Oh, sun, water, soil, air, fire, you know, the spark of life, and what's included in each of those? An equal balance of spiritual, emotional, physical, and mental health. So however you choose to use it, a physical uh, maybe you can call it playtime, or you can call it exercise, or you can call it dance, or you can call it gardening, or running, or whatever it is that feels good to you. To you, okay? That's what matters, not what some, I don't know, pro wrestler did, or some supermodel, or some so-called star. It's what works for you. Now, here's the kicker. This is the one that everybody wants to circumvent. And this has to do, in fact, you know what? I'm going to read the quote that uh, one of the listeners posted on my page today first, which even more beautifully expresses what I intended to share. She says, or, or this, this says, there's an Indian proverb that says that everyone is a house with four rooms. A physical, an emotional, a mental, and a spiritual. Most of us tend to live in one room most of the time, but unless we go into every room every day, even if only to keep it aired, we are not a complete person. And I swear, if I was on video right now, I would show you. I actually wrote these things down. I'd never heard that proverb in my life. And uh, so getting back to, you know, the equal parts and the equal rooms that I actually wrote down, the emotional room that we all want to avoid. Now, <laughs> how can you avoid it? Uh, by ego, right? Letting your ego get the best of you because you don't want to feel pain again or you're going to build these big walls, you know, the Great Berlin Wall around your heart because, you know, well, that's lesser than only those, you know, ridiculous, weak humans would actually let their, you know, feel their emotions. I'm so much better than that. <laughs> but within that, what's within that emotional spectrum? Oh, all of it. Joy, pain, happiness, love, fear, sadness, uh, humor, uh, anger, um, uh, uh, addiction, self-abuse. I mean, all of these emotions that we think are beneath us, right? I mean, some of these uh, spiritual... Uh, self-proclaimed uh, holier-than-thou people, I mean, they don't even want to feel happy, feel joy, because even that's beneath them, because it's a feeling, and that's beneath us. I'm just going to focus on my third eye and meditate my life away. I'm so special. Really? I'll tell you what. 
you're not a complete human if that is your road and if that's your road and that's your path that's totally fine uh you know tobias brings it up uh, all the time he brings up the uh analogy of the dude in the gym you know the muscle head that works out only on his upper body and you know looks like popeye or, or brutus <laughs> up there but then the skinny little tiny girl down below now doesn't that look funny <laughs> You know, work on one thing for that, uh, the looks, right, or whatever it is. And then, of course, he brings up uh, the analogy of the woman with the blue eyeshadow in the psychic shop or the bookshop, right? Now, that, again, is a little bit um, unbalanced, right? They, you know, okay, so you might have a gift, you might be intuitive, you might have whatever it is you're going for, but you're not incorporating the entire being. In fact, I know many people who I guess you can consider them uh, mentors of mine who, you know, they know all the practical stuff, but when it comes to the feeling, whether it's expressing themselves in any emotion, including love and joy, well... That's just not proper. <laughs> or, you know, crying in public. Well, that's just not proper. <laughs> well, what happens? These people end up beating themselves up, okay, in their own time, and then causing all sorts of health problems. I mean, for example, heart disease. We want to just blame some unknown cause. Oh, it just happened automatically. It's just magic, or it's genetics, another big fat lie, which I've discussed on uh, shows before. Well, my mom and dad have it, so I'm going to have it too. Well, chances are, I mean, when it comes to genetics, uh, you know, it is true that you may have or hold on to whatever your parents did, but not because it's in your genes. It's because it's in your habits. If you were not taught to express or to love or to feel, then of course that's what you're going to take on as your personality or your eating habits or whatever else it is that contributes to that ultimate dis-ease, right? So if you really want to heal, you need to find out what it is you are not at ease with. Now, I'll tell you, getting back to uh, my experiences um, as far as the uh, not good enough programming or, you know, the fear prison and uh, the cycle of shame, wow. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to tell you it's easy. It's the hardest thing in the world to look in the mirror, but it is also the most refreshing. You know, we feel so superior because we can stand back and, you know, observe and point fingers and, hey, we're pretty damn good at pointing out what's wrong with everyone else, aren't we? Yeah, pat yourself on the back. Does that feel good? Does that make you whole? Does that make you complete? Now... What if you were able to turn that around? Because what do they say? When you're pointing one finger, there's three pointing back at you. Or I'm sure you've heard this. You can only recognize or you can only see in others that which you know in yourself. Wouldn't it be interesting to do a little experiment, you know, for the weekend or the week or even for a day where every time one of those judgments appears and you want to point fingers at somebody else turn it around and ask yourself well why is this bothering me what what what's in me that could cause that type of judgment and you know judgment is a huge one i know we're taught oh it's god you know some bearded dude in the sky or call him god call him allah call him uh, you know buddha call, call him bob dude call him <laughs> him her it anything you want source divine whatever as long as we're calling it something outside ourselves it's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifiland Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifiland. There's nothing else like Modifiland. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. 
Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Yo, what's up? Check this out. The voice of the revolution. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right. Welcome back. And thanks again for joining us here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And really, I just want to thank you all, and especially the chatters, uh, just for your love and support. Um, It has really, really helped me um, work through many of my fears. I don't want to say, um, uh, you know, overcome them because they're obviously still there. I am a work in progress and I am not afraid to admit it. But uh, here we are again. uh, For those that want to still wear the masks, you're going to hate this show. You're probably going to hate me because, yep, we're talking about those yucky, messy feelings (laughs) and all of those things that we don't want to feel. And you know what's really funny is that that's actually the hardest thing in the world that prevents us from doing everything. And, you know, I'll get back to that here in just a moment, but I did want to continue um, on the judgment aspect and, you know, the God in the sky that's outside of us and we have no power and, you know, we just, we're just victims of circumstance. And, you know, let me pose this question to you. What if all judgment was self-imposed. Yeah. What if it was all self-imposed? What if, due to whatever type of conditioning programming we were brought up in, whether it's a a religion or even an anti-religion or a... uh, um, you know, politics or due to environment or location or whatever it is, uh, abusive parents or, you know, whatever it was. What if that alone was what brought it on? Whatever the circumstances are that you think that you are in right now. Um, for example, I will, uh, you know, we'll use uh, sexually transmitted diseases as the example. What if you, you know, were taught, like many of us, you know, oh, premarital sex, you're, you know, you're sinning and (laughs) God hates you and uh, now you're the devil or working for whatever. What if that thought alone was brought brought about due to you feeling that you did something wrong. What if? I <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things that I've been pondering or whatever it is, you know. Uh, like uh, my friend I mentioned earlier, you know, doing drugs and, uh, you know, things that he's not exactly proud of, which I'm proud of him, by the way. But let's say whatever health issues he faced because of that, he brought on himself only because his shame. Or, you know, we talked about this in the idea of physical health before, when you're eating something and, you know, like uh, I'll use the, um, the mono fruit fast cult, for example. People, um, you know, they believe that the only way to heal is to have just one fruit, you know, juiced over and over and over, and that's all you can have. Yet, when they eat a cracker... They feel guilt, they feel shame, they feel that they've done something wrong, and then all of a sudden, their digestion, everything all tenses up, and, you know, they can't get anything through or down or whatever because they feel so guilty that they didn't have just organic grape juice today. Yeah, we can do that. Or let's say every time you light up that cigarette and you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to get cancer. Oh, my God, I'm such a horrible person. Oh, my God, why am I doing this? Oh, my God. 
Uh, you can do that. In fact, you know, I've shared with you all uh, many of the uh, diagnoses and issues that I've had in my life, namely cancer, um, or that's the one I'm going to speak about right now, that I gave to me in my private parts. Uh, private parts, listen to me. Talk about shame, right? <laughs> Cervical and ovarian cancer, and I firmly believe I brought that about because of the guilt and shame and anger and resentment over being raped. And after that, you know, I made all these promises to God because I have to be this good little girl, right? You know, I'll never have premarital sex. And then, you know, met a man, fell in love. Oh no, I, I gave in to the throes of passion and I had premarital sex and then what? I was sick. Oh man, it was because I didn't listen to God or some dude's version of what God says. And <laughs> you know, I brought on that judgment, those consequences completely on my own. I mean, example after example, I'm just asking you to kind of look at this and see if or how it may relate to your life. Chances are it probably does. Oh, and you know what? I've got a couple callers on the line, so uh, let's uh, mute myself right now and get to the callers. Oh, this looks like our good friend Sharon. How are you doing Hi. tonight, Sharon? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yay, wonderful. Thank you. Well, I know you are kind of uh, working on, uh, you're kind of on the same path as me, you know, breaking it all wide open and uh, sure. trying to uh, get past these fear prisons. Do you mind uh, sharing that with us? Sure can, yeah. Well, mine all started um, from, well, I grew up in a cult. I was sort of born into it. And, um, the per the, well, the person who ran the place um, sort of injected a lot of shame into me, um, just with the natural things like what you were talking about over issues with um, sex or basically anything. Um, so it's like if one person injects this shame idea into you, uh, it seems to carry out throughout your whole life. So it's almost like a self-induced after that. If the person doesn't have to keep telling you um, the original sin, so to speak. So that's what I'm sort of finding out is that... Um, are you there, Christy? I am. Oh, okay. It was so quiet. I was just wondering. Um, it's kind of a, I self-induce it onto myself now. I don't have to have somebody else telling me something is shameful. I sort of took it on, taken it on as a habit, and now I'm having to find out that it's, it's me. <laughs> it's my own thinking now. I can't blame it on the person that originally told me these things. Hmm. I think um, we've actually, I totally relate to that, Sharon, um, you know, holding on to these things. And I, I, I think I did address uh, something similar to that in a recent show. And then I ended up doing a couple videos after the show uh, talking about uh, self-hate uh, and uh, guilt and shame and how we actually take on the role of the abusers and exactly. you know I'm going to put out kind of a radical idea there's something that kind of came to me where we um, we attract abusers we'll just call them abusers into our life that mirror what we are actually thinking about ourselves um, do you, like, okay, so if I feel like I'm not good enough, I suck at everything I do, then I'm going to meet somebody that's going to remind me, Christy, God, you suck at everything, you're not good enough, and, you know, I know you're six foot tall and a size two, but you're too fat. You know, you would be perfect if you just had liposuction and a nose job and things like that. And the way I see it, or, you know, how it's played out in my life, is when, you know, it's easy to 
you blame somebody else, right? They did this to me. They told me this. But we don't have to choose to believe it or take it on. And when we finally are tired of abusing ourselves, then we're either able to kick the abuser out, run away from the abuser, say no, do whatever it takes, or maybe they'll just fall away in our life because they don't have any dead energies for them to feed off us anymore. Does that make sense? Very much so, yeah. Yeah. So what we were not only the judges, ultimately, but also our own abusers, and those out there were just mere reflections of what we were experiencing inside ourselves, and how about this? What if the, you know, we'll just call them the abusers, they were the ones brave enough to actually say these things out loud, right? <laughs> Which yeah, exactly. I know it might sound kind of sick or, or twisted or whatever, especially if you're not ready to take full responsibility for, you know, being co-creators in our lives. I mean, I almost feel uncomfortable saying it because I know I'm going to tick somebody off. But when we take responsibility and we realize that all of that stuff is inside us, they are actually serving a purpose and a beautiful service. A beautiful purpose, in fact, to light that fire under your butt and say, no, you can't do that anymore. But, you know, so what happens? Even if we do have the balls to say, no, you can't do that anymore, what happens? We still do it to ourselves. I know I have. I mean, I exactly. get to my cult and I got away from all of it. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilant Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilant. There's nothing else like Modifilant. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. All right, all right. Welcome back. Top of the second hour here tonight. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And if you would like to join us on the text chat, that's over at SoulJourneysRadio.com. Any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call tonight at 218-339-8525. That's 218 218- Three three nine eighty five twenty five. We're kind of talking about uh, breaking free of the mind prison, the cycle of shame, uh, self abuse, punishment, and judgment. And I want you all to know, um, I, I my intent is uh, nothing I'm saying here is out of judgment. I'm definitely not pointing fingers. Again, the, getting back to uh, what I shared in the first hour, um, we can only recognize in others that which we know in ourselves. And I know all of these things in myself. These emotions, these fears, these judgments, these punishment, all of it. And, you know, I'm well, let's get naked right now. Uh, you know, not necessarily our physical bodies, but our minds, our hearts. I mean, who would we be without these fears? What would we be? How would our life be different? What would it be like to just throw that baggage out and finally be able to discover how great we really are? So, you know, I'm not blaming anyone. Oh, you're in this situation because you suck. And, you know, blame game is lame. It's not about that. It's about taking responsibility for our roles in co-creating 
our existence, our realities. And uh, we do still have Sharon on the line. So let's get back to the lovely goddess warrior, Sharon, who uh, does not yet love herself as much as we all do. <laughs> How you doing, honey? I'm doing good. Did you I'm getting see there, any though. Of that, that I shared? Uh, does any of that uh, apply to you at all in any way? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yay. Oh, okay. All of the above. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been quite the long process, but sometimes I wonder why I can't just snap my fingers and it will all go away. Can you recognize what a badass you are for doing everything you've done? I mean, do you ever look back on your life and say, holy smokes, I was there, and look at me now? Can you appreciate yourself for that? Can you love yourself? Can you forgive yourself? Yeah, I do that. I, I occasionally look back to see where I've come from, but not enough, though, and I'm not sure why. It's hard. Yeah. Emotion. We might have to feel, huh? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, just when I gain new ground, I feel like um, I'm starting from scratch all over again with some other issues. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> you and me both. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to go tackle this one fear, right? And I think I've got it all figured out. It's like, woohoo, I did that. And then a whole other universe opens up that I did not even know existed when I was hiding myself, shaming myself, protecting myself behind that initial fear wall I tried to break through. Exactly. Yeah. So what if that is our, I mean, what if that is life? What if it is a constant progression of discovering and rediscovering these things within ourselves to make us whole, to make us complete? I mean, you mentioned the magic button. Why can't I just push a button and make it all go away? And let me tell you, <laughs> I have definitely asked that question, oh, I don't know, a few uh, hundred thousand times. Um, because, you know, again, that's the easy way. That's the magic pill. That's the, the Prozac or the Zoloft or the Clonopin or all of these things that we take so that we don't have to feel it, right? Because, again, that's the hardest part. It's easier than a physical death, in my opinion. And that's why it's so easy to just... Uh, you know, say, ah, oh, screw this life, screw everything and everyone in it. And <laughs> but really, it's not the life itself. It's our mind prisons. Yeah, that too. And then when you're told at a young age that you're no good, then you keep, think, you keep searching for that part of you that, well, how do I find myself then amongst yeah. all those lies? But then you realize myself is already here. Where do I go to find it? Definitely. It trick Inside, that further, okay. dig deep into the soil, into the compost, and maybe, you know, those three days of darkness, right? <laughs> maybe that's what we need for, uh, uh, how do uh, Christians refer to it? The, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> the um, rapture. There you go. What if the magic pill was our heart and feeling those emotions that we didn't want to feel? I mean, nobody wants to go back and revisit traumatic experiences. And thankfully, you know, getting back to, uh, you know, the positive aspect or the benefits of ego. It won't give us anything that we can't handle. And, you know, maybe uh, if you're anything like me, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, bring it on. I could take it all. And, you know, thank God. God just kind of ignores me when I do that. <laughs> you know, makes me uh, walk up each rung of the ladder. I'm not allowed to skip any. And thankfully, because, you know, the few glimpses I get, it's like, oh, man, that's tough. That's hard. Of course, it is necessary. But let me ask you this when it comes to, um, you know, going back, revisiting places in your life where you felt that you weren't loved the way that you should have been, um, 
have you ever considered maybe going back and loving yourself and perhaps even rewriting that script? You know, give yourself that inner child, that scared little girl in these situations that, you know, giving her a big hug and holding her and letting her know that she's safe and loved? That's true. I've, I've done that very recently, actually. Yeah. I talked to myself as if I was talking to my own child. You know, to sort of break that pattern of negative talk in my head. You know? Awesome. How has that been working for you? I think it helped because um, I did that while I was on a walk in nature, and I could just focus on all these scatterbrain negative things that were running through my head. And then I just countered them with just telling myself, okay, Sharon, you're fine the way you are. Okay, Sharon, I love you. And I would just say things that I wouldn't normally say to myself. And I'm like, wow. This is... And then I realized how much I do say negative things to myself on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if you remember or if everybody did this, but um, there in my household, at least, and, and other households, they said, well, if you say a bad word, you have to stick a nickel or a quarter or something in the jar. How about if we all set a jar out and every time we catch ourselves with a negative self-talk, telling ourselves we're not good enough or whatever it is, we stick a quarter in the jar. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah? And see how fast that fills up and, you know, if it does good, because then, you know, go buy something to, to pamper yourself with, right? <laughs> Well, it's such a habitual thing that most of the time I never realized I was even doing it. I yeah. thought it was normal to think that way about myself or, you know, if I have a fear of singing in front of people, it, it, that's normal. It's normal to fear singing in front of people. Well, yeah, it might be normal, but is it natural? I mean, is it my natural state of being that I want to keep hang on to that fear. Yeah, well, our fear prisons, yeah. that's the thing. They look very, very comforting. You know, it's its what we've lived for however long we've lived it, right? Yeah. 5, 10, 20, 50 years or whatever. I mean, we trap ourselves in all sorts of fear prison, prisons. And, you know, we use excuses or justifications um, such as, uh, you know, responsibility or I, I have to continue being abused or not nurturing myself by this person because, you know, this person needs me or, <laughs> you know, whatever it else it is, you know, however it applies to your life. So, I mean, I understand that. I freaking, I can think of so many times where I've just, you know, stayed in a dead-end situation because it was comfortable. And what do they say? The devil you know is better than the devil that you don't know? Exactly. Yeah. You convince yourself that this um, situation is okay. It, it'll be fine. It's better than going out there and risking everything yeah. for something that can ourselves. This is all what there is. is. Out there. Hey, my parents did it, my grandparents did it, my neighbors are doing it, so maybe this really is the right way. I mean, I actually had those conversations with myself. I convinced myself that well, you know, everyone else is doing it, and everyone else says it's supposed to be this way, so it must be this way. I must be the crazy one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like when I, I went to school for law enforcement, and I spent three and a half years pushing and pushing through it. It was tough, all the academic stuff, and... You know, even the physical things I had to do or prove myself or get all my brownie points to show all the sergeants that I was going to make it and I'm going to, I'm serious about this. But then I realized through the process I didn't want to do it anymore. Well, half the people told me I was 
freaking crazy that I would give up at this point. And then the other half of the people told me, wow, Sharon, if, if you know that you don't want to do this at this point in your life, then you really know who you are. And that was yeah. a cop that told me that. He said, you got to follow your instinct. You don't get into something that you're not quite comfortable with. So it's just many different things in life, whether it's a job or what you're pushing through for school or anything. Totally. Really that We're taught that you know, right sacrificing no. ourselves is key yeah. to being a beautiful, respectful, you know, citizen or whatever. And, and what if the answer was always following your heart? Because when you are following your heart, and you are happiest, then, you know, see, we're taught everything backwards. We're like, oh, that's selfish. You can't do what you want to do or what feels good to you. But the truth is, I mean, most of the things we don't do or suppress ourselves from doing, we're doing it, uh, you know, under the guise of, oh, I've got to take care of these other people or these other people need me or I have to sacrifice this or that. But you really are no good to these other people when we're not fully loving ourselves, right? Exactly. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, Tobias uh, brought to my attention recently uh, the works, or I think it's called the work or the works of uh, Byron Katie or Katie Byron. Um, are you familiar with her? And, and yeah, the work? I, I read one of the books. Oh, okay. A while back, a um, few years ago. He, um, I actually wrote these down uh, one of the times we were talking. He's like, Christy, let's play a little game. <laughs> and uh, they really are just simple questions that can help you, you know, confront aspects of ourselves or what our thoughts, what we might think about other people or how the world should be. And uh, they're actually very simple. You can write your statement, uh, make it a should statement, like, People should be nicer, or people shouldn't, uh, you know, hurt me, or pe you know, whatever it is. Pick what's applicable to you, and then you'll ask yourself uh, the first question: oh, Is that true? Can you really know that it's true? Uh, then you'll ask: uh, How do you feel when you think that thought? Uh, the next question would be: Who or what? Would you be without that thought? And then you might want to finish it off with, can you find a peaceful reason to keep that thought? And then you turn it around. And what you really realize ultimately is that you're not in charge of that. You're only in charge of yourself and your perfe uh, uh, perception in your perfection. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it really is about. I mean, I spent much of my life, most of my life, you know, thinking, oh, people should be doing this, the world should be my way, everybody should be like me, and everything would be perfect, and <laughs> blah, 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 all of that fun stuff. And, you know, it's nice to introduce me to this. By the way, somebody on the uh, text chat said it's thework.com if you want to go check it out. Uh, uh, anyone who feels that this may help them, I believe it's right on the website. And, yeah, uh, she says you can download the forms, questions for free. So maybe play that game with yourself. You know, insert whatever those shoulds or shouldn'ts in your life. And, you know, just ask yourself honestly. And when you get done with that, turn it around. Reverse the should. So say your should was, uh, um, uh, what did I say? People should be nicer switch it to people shouldn't be nicer and what it did for me it got me to realize um, that people in my life the ones that did hurt me or weren't plain nice or whatever so to speak that really that's I'm not in charge of that that's their thing it's do I choose to believe that and carry it with me the rest of my life and let it suppress me and who I'm here to be that's a choice. Have you done that work? Oh, probably three years ago when I read the book. But then I thought my problems were too big, so I quit doing it. <laughs> yeah, it can feel You know, it's like, this couldn't work. 
<laughs> Everything all in due time. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coaching. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. Welcome to the world's meeting place. American. It's practically narcotic. Freedom. Oh, yes. I like very much. Radio. They're an American institution. American Freedom Radio. All right. Uh, welcome back. Um, this is, uh, apparently this is just for archive purposes. Uh, we, um... We're not live, but uh, now that I know that uh, the callers can hear and, you know, we don't want to take a break the whole show because this is important information. So I'm just going to bring you all on and we will just discuss it and hopefully we'll get the archive up uh, right after uh, the show, provided my recorder (laughs) actually works this time. Uh, I guess everything kind of got shut down at the station. So why don't we do this and maybe it'll actually be better for the caller because uh, they know nobody's listening and they can be themselves. (laughs) All right, so let's do this. Uh, Area code 918, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi there. Who am I speaking to? This is Judy. Hi, Judy. Hi. <laughs> what do you have for us tonight? Oh, I'm real new at this, so. What? Well, I don't bite too hard, and I have references. <laughs> okay, honey. <laughs> So, um, what do you, anything I shared with you, does that resonate with you at all? Is there something in particular that you would like to share or ask about? I don't know. Daryl mentioned uh, something about fear, about what I fear. And Mm -hmm. I fear, um, I fear, well, I fear myself. I fear death. I fear, um, Emotions. Yeah. Your spiders. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I fear people. I don't trust people. I have a hard time trusting people. Yeah. I can understand that. Those are big ones, huh? Yeah. How long have you had these fears? I've had them for a very long time. I've been a shy kid. I was a very shy kid growing up. I had no friends. I was a lonely kid growing up. Mm-hmm. And I'm still kind of lonely. I still don't have any friends. Aw, well, I bet you do, but maybe, um, you know, so I, I think that sometimes. I think nobody likes me, I don't have any friends, nobody's really, you know, truly understands and loves me. And, uh, you know, when I go through that and feel the emotions, however yucky and scary and dark they are, I come out of it realizing that it was actually, again, my self-imposed mind prison. Let me ask you, Judy, how would your life be different if you did not hold these fears? I think it would be more enjoyable. I would be more relaxed. Um, I would see brightness. Mm Mm-hmm. I would see the whole picture type thing. 
you know, I would want to explore. But the way I feel now, I, I don't do any of that stuff. So your fears are basically preventing you from exploring and doing the things that you really want to do with your life. Right. Do you see that there's a way out of it? No, I can't see a way out of it yet. I'm working on it, but I don't see a way out yet. Hmm. Do you... Um, now, okay... What if <laughs> these fears, uh, for example, you said spiders. Have you yeah. ever been bitten by a spider? Huh? Have you ever been bitten by a spider? No, I'm huh. definitely afraid of them. I will. I won't even kill them. I will. I will leave the room and shut the door and have <laughs> somebody do it. <laughs> and they still haven't bitten you. Imagine that. Uh. -huh. Yeah. So you're, you've are you been holding on to a fear, oh, let's say for 29 years, <laughs> right? Because you're 29. Um, <laughs> that has actually never even happened in your life. No spider has ever bit you, has ever killed you, has ever poisoned you, has ever, uh, you know, uh, axe murdered you. No. Nope. What would it feel like to let that fear go, to actually feel the pain? Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it could come from projections in movies. Maybe even you carried it with you from past lives. Maybe. But I what if you were able to actually feel that and let it go so it has no more power over you? Right. I don't know how I could let that go because I have severe arachnophobia. Just touching a spider web, I freak out really, really bad. I mean, mm -hmm. I am running and screaming. I can't stand the feel of spider webs. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just how bad it is. Okay, I can understand that. It doesn't, um, <laughs> you know, I, I probably don't want them crawling all over me. And, and thankfully... They actually are. Now I'm going to bring up something a little bit uh, different. Um, okay. But spiders as a spirit, and I'll say this is true for all animals, uh, all living things, including even insects, they are here to share a message with us. And spiders okay. actually are a symbol of creativity, also of patience, wisdom, uh, the weaver of destiny, so to speak, and also a reflection or representation of the shadow self. So what if you saw a spider and you said, wow, thanks so much for being here and reminding me of my creativity, my feminine energy, my receptivity and patience and, you know, the shadow self and dark aspects of life that I must confront to move forward. Well, sure, I could try that. Yeah. Just say, thank you, little spider. You know, I'm sorry I don't want to pet you because, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to that part of the fear, but I know you're not going to hurt me because... You know, I'm like seven billion times bigger than you. You're probably more scared of me than I am of you. Uh-huh. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, in your own time, you know, maybe you can Google uh, uh, spider animal totem or even look at like a Ted Andrews book or something like that and like read all the knowledge in the spider, you know, or what they're here to whisper to us, um, or perhaps even maybe in a safe place with your husband in the room, you know, actually try to talk to it intuitively and see if you can get the message directly. Of course, in the meantime, there's always Ted Andrews or Google or other sites like Lynn's Domain or... Uh, Spirit Animal, uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, Spirit Animal, I think, dot .info. And then read all of that, because, yeah, in my life, different animals or insects and things, ha arachnids as well, have appeared to me. And um, 
you know, it's like, oh, that's weird, or oh, that's scary, or why are you here? And so when I started looking at, at it that way, it kind of took the fear away, and then I was able to implement the message in my life of, you know, what they were kind of reminding me of. Right. Did you say you had a fear of writing or something? No. Well, I used to write, but I quit writing in, I used to write in a journal. Mm -hmm. In the, I don't know, I just quit just one day, just quit. In the, but I'm in fear of myself. Yeah, that's the biggest. I am so glad you said that. You gave me chills. You're afraid of yourself and your own power, aren't you? Huh? Afraid of yourself and your own power. Oh, are we live? Are we? Let me check on the. Let's see. Are we? Oops, can you hear us? Can you hear us? We might be live now. Just got a message. Uh, let me just make sure. No. Okay. Not e not everybody can. Okay. Nope. Hmm. Okay. Refresh. Let's see. Uh, okay. I just got a yes. So at least some of the people. Okay. <laughs> here as, all right, Judy. So you are live now. And okay. uh, we were just talking about uh, some of her fears, the fear of uh, spiders, and I guess you're going to have to wait for the archive. Uh, so we don't have to do all that again. And we were just moving on to um, she admitted the big one, which, you know, I think we all can relate to. And that is yourself. Do you know what specifically it is within yourself that causes you the fear? No, I don't know what it is specifically. Um, just uh, the unknown of uh, what I might do. Uh, you know? Who you are, who you should be. Are yeah. you following the right path? Are you... Um, uh, maybe uh, afraid you can take care of yourself or right. afraid yeah. of uh, breaking out of that comfort zone? Could right. that be part of it? And, and I'm in a frozen spot that I can't do anything. I don't. My house is a mess, and I never lived this way, and I can't stand my house anymore. I hate my house. I hate the way it looks. And I can't get myself to get it straightened up. I can't move yeah. myself. I can't. I'm afraid I might be productive. <laughs> ah, there you go. That's the big one. Okay. And I can totally understand that. I would also like to uh, bring up uh, another perspective as far as the house thing or the clutter and such that you are expressing here. Now, um, we always hear home is where the heart is, right? Right. And the truth is, it really is. It is actually a reflection of what's going on inside. So, you uh -huh. know, I'm sure you've been to those clinical type uh, sterile looking houses that don't look lived in at all. That's kind uh -huh. of like a reflection of, you know, not much going on inside or a lot of fear a lot, you know, afraid of expression or creativity. And then there's the other side with the extra clutter and the messes and this and that. I would be willing to bet that right. that is also a reflection of what's going on inside in your heart, in your mind. A lot of clutter that you right. just don't know what to do with. So right. the outside, exactly. Exactly. you know, as within, so without, right? As above, so below. It's a reflection right. of what's going on inside. So I would guess that by working on sorting those fears out within yourself, the outside is going to clean itself up automatically pretty much, right? Right. I mean, you know, the fairies probably aren't going to come by and do it for you, but <laughs> you will find that motivation to get it done as you start recognizing what is going on on the inside, recognizing it, facing it, feeling it. You think you can do that? 
I can try. I don't feel oh. I I don't feel a lot of things. I really don't. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't feel. I just don't feel nothing. It's, Why do you not feel me. anything? That that really concerns me because I can't. I don't express feelings except for love for Harley. You know, uh, my son. And that's in. That's about it. I don't. I just. I can't express anything. Hmm. So perhaps it could even be fear that is, uh, you did mention earlier when we were talking that emotions was uh -huh. one of your fears, and you've certainly gone out of your way to make sure that you don't feel anything, do you? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I sure have. I've done that for years. And I know you said that you don't see a way out of it right now, but you also expressed to me how your life would be different if you didn't hold on to these or have any of these fears. So let me ask you this. Let's say you are God, you are Merlin, you are whatever, <laughs> anyone okay. you want, and you could weave a magic wand and have the perfect life be anywhere you want to be, be, ev be everything you want to be, paint, paint me that picture, Judy. What would it look like? Who would you be? Where would you be? What would you be doing? And remember, uh, you're the magician. You're God. There are no restrictions or limitations such as finances. What would, what would your well, life look like? I picture Florida. <laughs> okay. You'd be in Florida. What would you be doing? Oceans. Uh, the orange, the orange groves there, the sunny weather. I love the sun, and Disneyland is there, or Disney World. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so you'd um, go to Disney World every day. Yeah, I'd go if I could. Sure would. Mm -hmm. I'd go to the ocean every day too. I think okay. that would be neat. All right. Now, would you have that fear? Would you take that fear of spiders and emotions with you? I don't know. I think I could leave it behind if I could do ah. something like that. Okay. So what else would your life look like? Would you have the same family? Would you uh, be working a job? Would you be writing or doing art? Or what would you be doing? Um, keeping my house clean, for one. Okay. You know, starting fresh like that, getting into a routine. Um, I wouldn't be working, no. Um, I would be at home with Harley, you know, or be at home during the day doing house chores, and then spend, spend time with Harley at night, you know, doing the cooking and the cleaning and stuff, and, um, and just doing it. Do something like every other night, like a family night. Mm-hmm. I think that would be nice. What if you really are the painter of your own canvas and you could actually have all of that which you think you can't have? That would be... A, it would be nice if I could have it. Yeah. It would. So what does that uh, feel like? When you think, you think about being in Florida and the orange groves, going to the beach and Disney World every day, what does that uh -huh. feel like to you? It, it just sounds pretty. I can see it in my face. I can see it in my image, in my mind, you know. Good. I can just picture it. Just, just the sound of the ocean waves and the seagulls. It's just ah. so relaxing. So you can see it and you can hear it. Can uh -huh. you feel it? Can you smell the salt water crashing oh, down? Yeah. 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 So I'm there. <laughs> Why don't you hold on to that thought, Judy? Maybe even write it down and focus on that and that bliss yeah. that you feel when you're in that space. Is that something you could do? Yeah, that is. Well, guess what that means? Okay. You're feeling, and you do have emotions. Ooh. Right. 
Ah. Okay. <laughs> so that's the start, isn't it? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh oh. I'm just seeing. Okay, at eight fifty-two, we're going to be cutting to a break here. Um, okay. I did see that we are going to be able to go an extra segment or something tonight because of the time that we lost. Um, yeah. So yay! We'll get a little okay. extra time here for everyone. Um, I noticed good. there were other callers on the line, but you know, honey, Judy, I want you to hold that thought. And, okay. you know, we can talk about it further, how you can physically bring that into your being. But okay. first of all, you need to remember, hold on to that dream. Don't give okay. it up. You absolutely can have that. And I know you're not going to like this. Uh, the emotion, the feeling is going to have to happen yeah, <laughs> at some true. point to create that. I mean, we can avoid things all we want. But uh, as I was sharing uh, when we were not live. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifiland Brown Seaweed Extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called Laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of Laminaria to make just one pound of Modifiland. There's nothing else like Modifiland. It is the richest in alginate, Fucoidin, organic iodine, and Lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Fucoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifiland banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. News and information you can trust. This is American Freedom Radio. Freedom, freedom. American Freedom Radio. Radio. American Freedom Radio. Oh, okay. I think I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry. I was waiting for the music. I think we are live now. So welcome back, everybody. Soul Journeys Radio on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight and waiting it out through uh, the technical difficulties. And uh, we have been blessed with uh, ha being able to add another segment onto the show here so we can kind of finish this. And uh, uh, But I don't see Judy here, <laughs> so uh, that's okay. You know what? We'll just um, keep on uh, keeping on. Um, you know, I'm sure what uh, she shared uh, you can probably relate to, um, at least uh, some of it. I know I do. I feel all of that, you know, that fear of... Uh, she hit a big one the fear of the self who am i who would i be what would i be what would i be doing without all these bags i packed oh my gosh would i have to rely on myself well, would I have to rely on myself uh, to eat or to uh, clean the house or to get the spiders outside of the house or whatever it was? Uh, would it? Would I have to um, or would I feel like I should be exploring my creativity and all of those things that she mentioned? And, uh, yeah, really, really hit home. Um, of course, she's not here with us anymore, but I hope that did help, you know, to Judy, if you are listening, stay with that feeling of that perfect life that you just painted for us. Feel it. Breathe it in. Smell it. Touch it. Walk those sandy beaches with your bare feet and, you know, feel yourself going on the roller coasters or even Pleasure Island <laughs> or, you know, whatever you like to do down there. But, um, yeah, I think that was a very beautiful place. But, you know, here we go. I'm going to ask again, what if we didn't have to wait till we were in Florida to be our best self now to be the best we could what if we could start chipping away at those mind prisons those fear patterns right now here today what if we could take steps forward every day to 
love ourselves as we love our children. She said she loves her son and her husband and all of that. What if she loved herself the way that she loves them? told herself how great she is once in a while and you know a couple people in the chat of course mentioned uh, diet and how when they changed their diet they started to feel better and more in control of the emotions and things that we want to feel and you know speaking for myself um, that definitely worked for me but again that is just the, um, you know, that's the physical aspect. But again, you know, as I mentioned, we have to experience all of that equally, including those emotions. And getting back to uh, emotions and healing and how we hold these suppressed emotions in our organs, in our cells, in our body. Uh, in the text chat, when we were not on the air, I brought up the example of repressed anger. You know, oh, women, you know we're not supposed to feel angry because, you know, you're just a psycho bitch or, you know, whatever. You're supposed to be a lady. And so we hold on to these things. And, you know, how what I've discovered is that, interestingly enough, the, okay, the liver is where we harbor our anger. So we are naturally going to be attracted to things that will harm our liver and I'll use alcohol as the example so then here we go we're suppressing all this anger so we can play nice and uh, be what society expects us to be right don't uh, don't go into the dark uh, the boogeyman is gonna get you type thing so what do we do we suppress it with alcohol, we, you know, end up harming our liver, and then later on we blame it on cirrhosis. Well, I can't do this, I can't step out of that fear prison because now I have this disease, right? Same thing with uh, fear, which is harbored mainly in our kidneys. So we are naturally attracted to things in our life that will harm our kidneys, and, you know, even pancreas, and then we we can blame it on diabetes or, oh, I can't do this because now I have this disease. So whatever it is, whatever our mindset is, we are going to bring these things into our life. They will manifest physically. They will, without a doubt, manifest physically until we are ready to get dirty, dig in the dirt, and feel, express, and release these emotions. Now, there's nothing wrong with feeling emotions. Okay, granted, there's always an example of, well, look at what this person did, and it was all because of emotions. But, <laughs> you know, so there's obviously uh, a healthy healthier way to express them than, uh, you know, going in, uh, kicking your dog or, or whatever, right? Or punching a hole in the wall or something. Um, grief is harbored in our lungs. Grief, suppression, uh, suppressed crying. Uh, so when we uh, say maybe we're brought up in a situation where we're not allowed to feel emotion, we get, you know, spanked if we cry or locked in closets or, you know, all of those fun things um, <laughs> that uh, many of us have experienced, then we're going to end up being attracted to things that will hurt our lungs, whether it's uh, smoking cigarettes or smoking or, you know, whatever it is that's going to harm our lungs. And then we end up blaming it on, oh, well, you know what, I can't go run a marathon because I have asthma. Or I can't go on a beautiful hike in Hawaii or Florida in the Orange Grove because I have COPD and I'll start wheezing. Or, you know, whatever it is. So we actually give ourselves excuses to justify what we are afraid to do because we are afraid to feel those motions, those emotions. We are afraid to step into our personal power as Judy expressed, because we don't know the outcome. Guess what? <laughs> We're never going to fully know the outcome. All we can do is take steps. I mean, do we know just, uh, you know, Mother Nature? Can we control her? Can we predict her? That 
is our natural state. All of it. Sometimes there's sunshine. Sometimes there's rain. Sometimes there's tornadoes. Sometimes there's hurricanes. Sometimes there's clouds. Sometimes, uh, you know, there's hail. It's all of these things are absolutely necessary. And getting back to what I brought up in the beginning of the show, we need to feel or visit, even if as the proverb says, only to keep it aired, each of these aspects of ourself to be a complete, holy, whole, full-spectrum being. That's physical, that's emotional, that's mental, and that's spiritual. And, you know, be my guest. We can all hold on to these fears all we want, you know, our comfort zones, it feels good, it's warm and cozy, and, you know, it's... (laughs) We do that. I do that. We all do that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it. And maybe even that in itself is part of our journey. So we can, you know, end up being an inspiration to somebody else, whether it's either what to do or what not to do. But either way, wherever we are is exactly where we need to be. So it's time to give up that shame, give up that guilt, give up that fear, give up the excuses, okay? You know, people brought up, uh, let me see if I can scroll back here and see some of those comments. I wanted to go through uh, some of the fears individually. And uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, fear others will not forgive me for hurting them or that I myself won't forgive me. Well, I will say to this person, I forgive you and I love you and I know you did the best you could do in that circumstance. You did absolutely the best you could do and everything you had to do to get you to where you are here today. Poof! gone. You're forgiven. Woohoo. All right. Here's another one uh, somebody brought up. He says, uh, at first he said that he thought he wasn't good enough. And he's like, well, maybe it's not so much, but I think that they think I'm not good enough. So who is this they? Um, Let me give you an example here. Um, I was watching a video by Bashar. Um, I don't know. I don't even remember the name of it because it was a few months ago, but it was absolutely brilliant. He said, um, imagine you were wearing, and I'm paraphrasing, and I might even get the colors and everything wrong, but he said, imagine that you are wearing a red coat. And some stranger walks up to you and says, God, I hate red, and I hate you, and or not red, I'm sorry, I hate blue, and I hate you for wearing a blue jacket, and, you know, this is just absolutely ridiculous. And so, you know, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I'm wearing red. This guy is talking about blue. I mean, what a total nutter, right? <laughs> I thought it was a wonderful analogy because these things that, you know, we want to hold on to that other people told us we're not good enough or, you know, we sucked at this audition or whatever, if you don't actually believe a piece of that inside of you, it is just going to roll right off as if it never happened. I mean, what would you do if you were wearing a red coat and somebody told you that they hate you because you're wearing blue? You would laugh your ass off, right? <laughs> so, you know, when people trigger you based on, uh, you know, myself, uh, I mean, you're not pretty enough or you're not good enough or, you know, any of these things that we've discussed here tonight. I mean, I remember a couple months ago, I was completely devastated when uh, one of my friends told me that I basically had to renounce my beliefs to, you know, fit into their crowd or be loved and accepted or treated right, uh, you know, by them. And, you know, that really hurt. That cut me to the core. But the reason it hurt and cut me to the core the way it did was because there was a piece of myself, of that aspect, that I still was not comfortable with, that I still felt shame over. You know, maybe not so much guilt, but same thing. You know, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm here in Branson, and I'm in the Bible Belt. I shouldn't pay any attention to, you know, emotions or divination or metaphysics or spirituality. Just go with the program, you know. Christy, you're a witch. 
witch doctor and you're the whore of Babylon and all of these things. If I didn't doubt that piece inside me, I would not have been as devastated as I was. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind, you know. So when people come into your life and let's say they're total freaking angry, psychotic jerks. Okay, cool. You know, I mean, who isn't a total, you know, freaky, crazy, psychotic jerk at some point in their life, right? It's where they are. We can choose, does this compute? Does this sit right with me? The only way it's going to affect you is if it does, right? So when you know yourself, when you love yourself, when you're nurturing yourself, when you're accepting yourself, embracing your worth exactly as you are, it's like, uh, have you ever seen the rain uh, fall on lamb's quarters? It just rolls right off of them, or elephant ears, too. It just rolls right on them. You know, and and shame, of course. I'd like to bring something else up about that. Um, You know, again, these are all experiences that have been in my life. And um, the... Oh, gosh, where was I going to go with this? I was. <laughs> I want to. It's, it's so hard to kind of bring these up and, you know, not worry about offending somebody else or whatever. But the, when it comes to these programs that we hold on to, Again, it's a choice. We don't have to hold on to those programs. We can choose, is this serving us? Ask yourself right then and there when you feel it. And that doesn't mean suppress it. That doesn't mean, you know, I'm going to make it go away. I'm going to pray it away. I'm going to meditate it away. I'm, I'm going to, you know, pill pop it away or, or drink it away or whatever. That means fully going through it and actually feeling it. And, uh, you know, I had so much shame in my life that I wanted to hide myself. I wanted to hide everything about myself. My ugly, scarred, fat, dimply body, my, my, my talents that weren't as, uh, you know, as good as uh, Barbara Streisand or, you know, pick whoever you compare yourself to. I hid. I hid myself. And you want to know what happened during that time? Oh, my God, did I get hit with frickin' stalkers from everywhere. And you know what that did? It actually forced me to come out of hiding and into the open. And, you know, um, some of it I took on. It's like, oh, my gosh, how could you say this about me? You're, you're, You're calling me a prostitute and I'm a virgin. Or, you know, how could you make up these stories? That forced me out of my shame prison, out of hiding, to come out in the open. And what happened? Look at me now. I mean, (laughs) again, I'm not perfect. I'm not completely healed. I'm not any of these things, but I don't have any stalkers. I don't have anyone bothering me, uh, criticizing me, or telling me all these evil things, or, you know, it doesn't happen anymore. Why? Because I'm clean. I released that fear prison. Oh, i got to hide because these people are going to shame me and poke fun at me and, you know, laugh at me or call me mean names. So, (laughs) and you know what? I'm not trying to sound or make it sound any easier than it is. Let me tell you, it's been hard. It was like seven straight years. Bam, 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 bam. You suck, you suck, you suck. But you know when they stopped? When I realized that I don't suck, that I am great, that I am perfect, and the reason they are doing these things were reflections of that shame inside of me, which actually propelled me even further to, you know, come out of the closet, so to speak, come out of the spiritual closet, start doing videos, allowing myself to be seen on videos, seen in public, doing shows by myself, uh, realizing that I do have value and I do have worth. And, you know, I might not have the most value. I might not have the most worth. I might not be the best or the most at anything. But I accept and realize I am exactly where I'm supposed to be, 
went in and out of the webs, the weaves of everybody else, that that extra piece in that God puzzle, so to speak, that divine puzzle, make it whatever you want, again, orange groves in Florida, they wouldn't be there without that extra piece of the puzzle, even if it was all just orange. If your piece was just orange or just green or orange and green or, hey, the brown, nobody wants the brown, right? Because that's dark, that's yucky, that's beneath. But guess what? It is freaking essential. So I would like to challenge you all. Love yourself. Start loving yourself today. Again, it's not a magic pill. The magic pill is you. It is inside your heart. It's time to get real and heal. MyTrueEssence.net would like to tell you about Modifilan brown seaweed extract. It's composed of an elementally rich seaweed called laminaria. It takes 40 pounds of laminaria to make just one pound of Modifilan. There's nothing else like Modifilan. It is the richest in alginate, phocoidin, organic iodine, and lamarian. Alginates are the most effective organic element in nature that enable the body to rid itself of heavy metals, radioactive elements, and toxins. Phocoidin is an extremely effective anti-cancer substance found abundantly in brown seaweed. Organic iodine is the greatest protection for the thyroid offered by nature. Laminarin aids in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Go to www.mytrueessence.net and click the Modifilan banner to get started on your path to rich health today. Also check out the healing shop for proven essential oils, medicinal teas, and even health coach. It's time to get real and heal. Go to www.mytrueessence.net. Get real and heal. Listen to Christy on Soul Journeys Radio. You're listening to the future of talk. American Freedom Radio. This is American Freedom Radio.